All right. Mm. 3D printing. 3D printing. We're into it. Yes. We're totally into it. We're so into it that we go through filament pretty quickly. And we uh, actually are going through 3D printers. So we've broken <laughs> two Da Vinci Juniors. <laughs> uh, I broke a yeah. Dremel. Uh, there might be a MakerBot broken. Uh, Carson not, may have just not, busted I'm not responsible a for brand that, new MakerBot. But, I hope um, not. Yeah. I hope we can fix that. But one of the things that people have been asking about is the cost of filament because mm -hmm. there are a lot of companies that's how they get you are yeah. trying to get you that it's way it's that same business model with the ink printers yes yeah. yes but uh we won't let that stand which is why we want to answer a question from greg orden what does he ask brian he asks i have a dremel 3d idea printer it came with a ton of dremel filament but i am getting close to having to order more do i have to stick with the dremel or can i use other brands and if so what does everyone recommend Great question. I get that all the time because if you read the Dremel instructions, it does say if you use any third party, because you have to use uh, Dremel filament, otherwise you'll destroy the printer and you'll void the warranty. Uh, well, I mean, it is, isn't it the case though that like they can't be responsible if you use really crummy filament and you break it, exactly. like, you can't come back to them and be like... Which is true. <laughs> that is complain. very true. So there is a certain quality to Dremel filament, but Dremel filament typically cost twice as much <laughs> as generic Go filament. figure, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I would do is I would go ahead and I would use, because it has no, it's not proprietary. There is no chip like there is in the Da Vinci Junior mm -hmm. that keeps you from using non-standard filament. Um, the, the biggest concern that people have is it won't fit into the slot because the slot is designed for Dremel spools. Yeah. But you can, you can also get spools that were designed for the Dreamforce, Dreamforge and it will fit just fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest something else. I like a filament maker called Hatchbox. Actually, uh, yeah, Hatchbox. there we go. Here's, here's just a, a little example of all the different types of Hatchbox filament that you can buy. If you scroll down that list, Kara, I, I mean, there's every kind of color, there's every kind of texture, and uh, you really are kind of unlimited by what you want to do. In fact, here, if you come to the table, here's, here's some of my, uh, my favorite. This one is a, is a red filament. Uh, this is a, w these are all one kilogram. It's about 333 meters of filament. This is a lot of filament. This nice. is more than twice as much as you would get inside of one of the branded Dremel rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it costs uh, the same. But will this roll fit into a Dremel no, printer? No, which is the second part of this answer. But let, let, let's look at some of the ones that I really like. So that's, okay. that's red. This one is oh, purple. Got to have a little bit of the purple. Lavender. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Got to have the standard black. There's so many of the, the projects that I use that are standard black. And this is one of my personal favorites right now. I, I played with this a lot. This is blue, but this is glowing blue. So this glows in the dark. Oh, awesome. I've been using UV LEDs inside of this, and yeah. the UV sets off the glowing. It's, oh, it's incredible. Neat. It's so much fun. It's a bit more expensive. I mean, you can expect to pay somewhere between twenty-two and thirty dollars for one of these. Pretty schools. good, though. Yeah, it's pretty good. And then there's also stuff like this. So this is a specialty filament. Uh, this gives it the copper color. Oh, neat! So if, uh, I was thinking about using this for the steampunk goggles to get kind of right, right, a to get mix. that brass look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the coolest thing about this is there actually is copper particles embedded in here. Whoa! So if you weather it, you'll get that little green tint going on. Oh, wow! So. It isn't that oxidation or yeah, something? That, yeah, which, you know, that's what you want. That's, that's, that's the yeah. look I'm looking for. You could do like a little Statue of Liberty or something. Precisely. <laughs> or I could do something that looks like old steampunk objects. Right. Which yeah. is yeah. where you're going. Yeah, that's where I'm going cool. for. Now, as you mentioned, these won't actually fit inside yeah, the Yeah, because I mean, the spool that one is Way on bigger. is different. This one's different. So how would you mount these in your machine? Okay, so two ways to do it. The first way is the super cheap uh, I used to do it, I don't do it anymore, and that's just to rewind. <laughs> Does that take a long time? No, not really, because oh. I, I, I would just put it on a rack. So mm -hmm. I would put one of these spools on the rack, I would take the old spool, insert one bit, and, then, and I actually set up a little motor, and it would just, I would hit the button, and it would just wind. Oh, okay. I'd have that's to watch it, otherwise sometimes it like jumps off the track, and Ooh. it just... <laughs> The, yeah. the issue with doing that, though, is every time you unwind that filament, you're kind of stressing it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if you stress it, there's a possibility it will snap. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, and then you come back and there's just... The, yeah, yeah the print head's just been going. It's got no filament mm. in it. That's, that's not... That's no bueno. Uh, the other issue is doing it that way opens it up to contamination. The worst thing that you can get on filament is, like, the grease from your hands. Ew. Yeah, I noticed that all these are, like, vacuum-sealed. Yep. And, and they have a little... Um, mm -hmm. Moisture 
back. Desiccant. I think. That's a little yeah. desiccant in there. Yeah, I, keep them. Never open up a filament pack until you're ready to use it. it. When it's like this, it's nice and protected. As long as you keep it in the box, keep it away from humidity. Mm -hmm. Keep it away from direct sunlight. And only open it when you're about to use it. You open it when you're about to use it. In fact, I save all those desiccant packs. I heat them up so that it, it they're active again. Mm -hmm. And then if I have a spool that I don't use all of it, I right. put it into a Ziploc bag, I vacuum seal it, and I throw a bunch of those desiccants in there oh. just to preserve it. Because otherwise you'll find your filaments tend to get brittle, mm -hmm. and when they get brittle, they just start snapping. Right. Yeah. And that, that's the worst feeling when you come back to your 3D printer and it's it's the head is helplessly going yeah. around, but there's nothing, you know, it's not touching anything. It's so sad. Yeah. It's so sad. Well, does it please you to see me <laughs> suffer? <laughs> Now, if you're not going to rewind, which I would suggest you don't do it, uh, there is a very super simple and very inexpensive way to, to do this, and that's with a spool. So this is a mount rack. Uh, this is a two spool. This allows you to put up to two different spools of filament, uh, and then you can either tabletop mount it, or you could wall mount it, or if, you, if you'll go ahead and play that, uh, that B-roll I've got, Kara, this is what I've got set up inside my lab. So in my lab, I've got my Dremel Idea Maker, and then I've got that. So it attaches to the top of this baker's rack. Oh. And uh, yeah, it, it's that's super awesome. easy to load. It's super easy to unload. Um, and you know, that's, that's the coolest thing. I don't have to do any rewinding. It's very easy on the filament. So it's not tugging mm -hmm. it. It's not pushing it through corners. It just basically draws it straight down that's smart. into the printhead. Uh, now, not all of us are going to have a setup like this where you, you know, can attach it to a rack above the printer. But if your printer is near a wall, you can also mount this rack on a wall. Yeah. Uh, you can mount it on a board and stand it up behind the printer, whatever you, you want to do. You probably could 3D print something that would do this, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, so if, if you do have a 3D printer that, uh, that doesn't have like an NFC counter like the Da Vinci Junior does, mm -hmm. uh, and it's PLA or ABS, all you need to do is make sure you get the right type of uh, filament. And for example, for my Dremel, it's 1.75 millimeter, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's PLA. PLA, yeah. Uh, Pretty so, common. Yeah, check your specs. Make sure you have the diameter, because there's also three millimeter for the larger printers, and there's also printers that can print in ABS. Well, I only do PLA because I don't like the toxic smell. Yeah. But uh, you now have an easy way for you to print on the cheap. Perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. Right? I like that. All right, I think.